Today I'm joined by Scott. Hello, Scott. How are we doing, Luke? All right? Ah, not too bad, not too bad. You? Very well, thank you. All right, so I'm going to start with the massive question first. What's your overall thoughts on Forest season so far? Uh, overall thoughts? What, if I give it a grade, like an old school report or something like that? Or just general thoughts? General thoughts. <laughs> Um, shock, uh, boring, boring to start with, really boring. Um, deja vu, uh, going down exact the same path we were this time a year ago, and then more recently, it's like I've got my forest back, we're playing a brand of football that is synonymous with great teams that have gone by over the years i'm not saying that this team is going to be a great team but it's just nice to see us having a go and playing in a a way that resembles nottingham forest so where do you think the turning point was for chris hewton if there ever was one as in from working to not working why do you think it just didn't work at all uh I think the thing that I've noticed with the new manager is that this seems to be like a a clean start with, you know, I've just listened to Steve Cooper talking at that fans forum and he's, he's talking about buying into Mr. Maranakis and buying into Dane's vision. And, you know, Dane Murphy started in the summer, Chris Hewton had kind of, rescued as I guess rescued the season last season it wasn't great but we stayed up and you know I guess that was the ultimate aim um given such a poor start but we still didn't really feel that you know we'd, we'd had this guy come in from from Barnsley with a you know a big reputation of buying up younger talent appointing managers that play you know a good style of football and it, it didn't really add up did it to start with it was kind of you know a bit chalk and cheese approach mm. And it's just interesting, you know, that Steve Cooper's now talking. It's almost like, you know, we're all on the same page. We're all going to go forward in the same direction. Whereas Chris Hewton never really mentioned about embracing the new vision or anything like that, you know. And and he obviously had ample opportunity to do that over the summer um, and at the start of the season. So, yeah, I find that quite interesting. Um, And I... I don't know if I guess it kind of felt like Hugh and he wasn't going to change his plan. He wasn't going to change his style. That was that was fairly evident, um, and it was just the same old, same old, wasn't it? That the players just didn't look ha- happy. They looked thoroughly miserable in their jobs, and I think you could apply that to any walk of life. That if you're miserable in what you're doing, then it's going to affect productivity. So. I think football footballers are a bit of a fickle bunch and I don't think it's worth us getting carried away yet or as Forest fans do like getting carried away. Um, you know, the, they, the change in the players is, I don't know, it's, it, you know, it's been like that, hasn't it, really? It's just like it's almost flicked on, flicked a light on overnight. But I think you've got players talking about playing with freedom and being able to express themselves and... Crikey, that's all we've wanted for the last 18 months. And, you know, we could probably stretch that back to Sabri Mushi's last six months in charge as well. <clears throat> so, who has impressed you the most since Steve Cooper's come in? Uh, well, obviously, Jed Spence. But I think, he, to be fair, I thought he looked fairly useful under, um, under Hewton anyway. I think Zink and Argyll... It was almost like the joy was being beaten out of his game. Same with Brennan Johnson. You know, it just didn't look happy. So, you know, it's not a surprise that, you know, that they're now starting to look like they did a little bit at the start of the season. We had a few glimpses at the start of the season of what Brennan Johnson could do and what Zinconagel could bring as well. Um, But since they've took the shackles off, it's like they're just, they're enjoying the football, aren't they? You know, I think that's that's evident in what we've seen second half at, at Barnsley and then obviously at Birmingham. Um, they just look a lot more positive and 
even for a paying punter, do you know what I mean? If you're paying X amount of money, you know, traveling away to watch teams, you want them to have a go. The amount of times I've come away disappointed from away games, and it's not just latter, this is probably over my 20 years, the last 20 years of, of suffering some of Forrest's downfall is that, you know, sometimes you've traveled absolute hundreds of miles for a, a no show and a, you know, a humiliating result as well. So, um, yeah, it's just, I think it's just really refreshing that, you know, we've got a team that looks prepared to have a go. And I, and I hope, you know, that we continue with it. I think it is early days, but they're talking about trying to play, I won't say, I won't say it uh, in a particular way. Um, that reflects the values of the club. So I think that was the big takeaway from what I've just heard from the fans forum is, you know, we're going to try and play in a, in a certain way. Yes, and it's not Cooper Ball, it's Forest Way. Don't say That's it. Why. Don't say it, Lee. You sound like a Derby fan saying that. No, I, I just repeated what Cooper said on the fans forum. No, I know, I know. The Forest Way, the Forest Way. Yes. Then Although again, we, we, though we have we have a way, I kind of when Derby say the Derby way, it's kind of like I don't even know what that is. So I'm sorry, I'm bringing, yeah. I'm getting like all irritated about Derby County. Um, be, but, be, but the first be, way for yeah. me is 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 playing on the counter attack, um, and playing with the ball to feet, and and also the first way is riding your luck, <laughs> like for like ninety minutes at the same time. Um, but that's what makes the buzz kind of even better. When you get a result, <clears throat> I think you kind of hinted at the answer to my next question in your last answer. Where do you think Forest's weakness still is? Uh, so I think strength in depth at the minute. I think up front is a is a worry. It's good to see Lewis Grabbins back on it, but Lewis has these. Periods. I hope he's going to stay like this for for a while. He seems to be that when he gets in a bit of a groove with the goals, you know that I think that shows good promise that you know potentially. I don't know how many he's got now. Is it three, four, something like that? But potentially, you know, he how many's he got? Has he got less than that? Um, but it, it just feels like he's in a bit of a groove at the minute, which I think is I think that's encouraging. Um, but I think Lyle Taylor, we've still not seen the best of him yet. Um, but I, I don't know. I mean, I know obviously the new formation, they're a bit, you know, either shaky at the back or they, they used to get to the formation where, you know, with three at the, at the back, they are, you know, crosses are getting into the box. But when you've got, you know, who was wing back? So you've got Jed Spence on one and um, the Max, Max Lowe, isn't it, on the other side. You know, what do you want? Do you want do you want them full backs playing further back and with defensively, or do you want them flying up the wing? So having witnessed what I've witnessed and what we've all witnessed in the last 18 months, I wouldn't bother playing two at the back. It's like let's just go and score some goals and let's just enjoy football and let's go and I score the opposition. I think I think the point that um again Steve Cooper made after Birmingham, was it was brilliant going forward, but we do have to be better dealing with balls into the box. And we've played against Matt Smith. Um, Barnsley didn't really have a, a tall guy as such. And then Yukas Yukovic and technically Scott Hogan as well. Who have yeah. caused our backline problems pre that? There was Kiefer Moore and um, yeah. the lad at Borough, whose name escapes me. Um, Borough. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I don't. I, I lost interest of the games when we played Borough because that was basically the end of Houston. So. <laughs> um, yeah, so you're thinking about, I don't know, you know, Figueredo's come back into the team and for he's a funny one, Figueredo. He's, he's kind of like, you know, I think for 90% of his appearances, he, he tends to have a good game. But I think the problem is with him, with, with Toby, is that he seems the mistakes seem to cost us. You know, they always seem to be 
kind of you know one or two clangers. I mean, he got got away with the one at Barnsley, but you know it was really clumsy. Um, but you know, consistency-wise, when he's on form, he's he's pretty solid as a as a centre back. I'm not sure if Joe Worrell's best position is on the right. I'm not sure about that. I think I prefer to see Joe Worrell as the centre. Um, the centre player in that defence, and, and maybe so, so you know, Umbe so look quite good, but he's injured. But you know, Figueredo, I think he might not be the long term answer, but I think he can definitely do a job. I think particularly in a three as well, where he's got a bit more protection of, of those next to him. So let's flip our conversation for a few minutes to Blackpool, because I know that well, it's a Blackpool preview, so. That's why. Um, what have you made of them this season so far? I think they've done quite well, really. It's, but I suppose it's not a, it's not that much of a surprise um, when you think about the teams that that came up. Obviously, Hull came up. Um, I'm trying to think. Peterborough, yeah. so Blackpool have done the have done the best, you know, out of those those teams. Um, and I think the manager's got. He seems to have carried that momentum into the new season where the likes of Hull and Peterborough haven't been able to do that. Whereas, you know, Critchley's managed to, you know, keep keep that crest of a wave going that, that got him up through the playoffs. And I think he's he's made a few signings and tweaked the squad. So I think he's, you know, they're doing a really he's doing a really good job of it. And obviously they've got a few injuries coming into the game with Maxwell being out, Lavery being out. Richard Keogh being out, everyone. <laughs> oh, is he really? According to Lee Charles TV, yeah, he said that Richard Keogh was out. So they're going to have a new keeper and got well, Jerry Yates up front and probably Ek Pateta and their other centre back playing, which I've not quite learned who that is yet. <laughs> Well, so long as DJ Campbell's not playing up front, then um, I'm kind of hopeful that we might be able to might be able to get a win. That must have been the last time Blackpool were at the city ground, was it? I don't know. I'm trying to figure it out. Yeah. Um, no, it would no. be under Stuart Pearce, wouldn't it, when we started the season? Because wasn't that the season they went down? Because they were going down under Oyster, the Oystons. Yeah, I think you might be right. I think you might be right that because I think we lost, didn't we lose four three at their place or five four in the last minute or something like that, or drew drew four all having scored a ninety fourth minute winner or something like that under Dougie Friedman, I think. Yeah, maybe. Um, just because you mentioned it, I happen to have a photo that Blackpool fans will like. You probably won't like it as much, but. Here's DJ Campbell celebrating. <laughs> I'll never forget that. It was horrible being stuck at the train station in the Bentic Hotel, crying into my pint pretty much that we'd managed to mess it, mess it all up. So, yeah, happy memories of Blackpool. Um, going back to us then, would you make many changes to the side for Blackpool? No, I don't think he needs to make any changes. Uh, I think midfield is, is I think those positions are up for grabs at the minute. It's not a surprise to see Ryan Yates being picked again by another manager, is it? He's kind of, you know, he, he, he's done it under the last four or five. It was good to see him on the score sheet as well. Um, and I'm trying to think that Barnsley game, you know, it, it just seemed like he was being encouraged to pass the ball forwards, you know. He was doing it time and time again in that game. So it'll be interesting because I think Steve Cooper has got a reputation for developing players. And I know Ryan Yates is not a young player anymore, but I don't think we've seen the improvement we would have liked under Ryan Yates. But I think with with Cooper, you know, he's a bit of a renowned coach. I'm hoping that we might start to see Ryan Yates push on a little bit with, with a better coach. Um, so, yeah, so... The, obviously, the lad from from Man United, Garner, he's not he's not he's not at that form that he showed last season. We've obviously got the lad from Paraguay as well. Um, who, by Pineda. all accounts, 
he looked all right against um I can't think of who it was who they played in the under 23s the other Burnley. night, but yeah, I think it was Burnley, wasn't it? I watched it for a little bit. He showed some neat touches. Um but yeah, I think you know it's really healthy. And, and obviously Colback's pretty much come from nowhere uh to come back in and you know, by all accounts he had a good game against Birmingham. So you know, long may it continue that we've got competition. I like having a pair in midfield, to be honest. You know, I think that midfield three, you know, we have one sitter, we have two sitters. It kind of just feels like to have two lads in there, midfield that, you know, get up and down. I quite like that. It's a bit old school. And also, in midfield, we've also still got Cafu. Yeah, I don't know what's happened to him. Now... He do you remember my feature for most of last season? Where it was, where was Basharu? Mm. It is now, where is Cafu? <laughs> I don't know. Did he, sign a, did he sign a contract? Yeah, he, he was um, signed on a permanent deal in the January transfer window. Mm. But then has since just randomly disappeared who knows who knows but he looked like he'd lost quite a bit away over the summer i think he was on the i think he was on the bench wasn't he, against coventry and came on and he looked like he'd lost quite a bit of timber and i thought oh this maybe this is a bit promising because i think that was one thing maybe last season was his mobility but technically he looked he looked all right um but again you know he might fall into this long list of players where we see him for a little bit and then they disappear, you know, they disappear off and, you know, we get a decent fee for them. So, we'll have to see. You, you mean like the long list of players we've had over the past, well, I think you alluded to it earlier, 20 years? <laughs> well, yes, but even more so, I think the last five years with relationships with, you know, with Olympia Arcos, that we've had a number of players that have probably gone a bit back and forth, and I, I don't think, I don't think either any of those deals have really kind of worked out. I think Bukalakis going back has probably done quite well for Olympia Arcos, um, but I can't think of anybody else that's really worked out. You see, I like to say as little as possible on the Olympia Arcos players because I thought that ma the majority of them looked decent when they played for us. Yeah. We just then seemed to just not play them. I mean, the exception to the rule, and I think the most confusing one, was Panagiotis Taxidis, who yeah. came in, sat on our bench, and never saw a forest yet. It was right. on. Mm. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it... But... I think we've had one or two that have shown in patches that they look, you know, they look half decent. And mm. then I don't know, they just struggle to adapt, don't they, to the, to the well, we've, and then disappear. We've all, we've already got the next one, Draga. Yeah. But I I reckon now though that that's going to happen less and less with the fact that we've got Murphy and the analysts. That we're getting quite a lot of stick from certain sections of our fan base for getting it wrong. Well, I think they're getting it right. If getting it wrong is bringing in Jed Spence, then, I mean, <laughs> I'd take them getting it wrong every single day of the week. <laughs> yeah, I think Jed Spence, Max Lowe. Um, I, I can't say that any of the ones we signed this summer... Are actually haven't done okay because they've even not played or looked decent. Yeah, I think and... Zinkanako looks looks he looks a decent investment. Um, I don't know, don't know about the. I mean, obviously the loan players aren't. They? I think that's the only annoying thing with that is that they're not our players. Um, but, but again, finances and everything else probably dictate that you probably got to do it with loan players, and I mean. I think we were looking at Buchanan at left back and then couldn't get Buchanan so we just went for the backup in Max Lowe 
And I mean, <laughs> what a backup option that was. <laughs> yeah, I think he's been a good good signing. I mean, I think the hope is that somebody like him, who's you know not going to get at Sheffield United, then we'll have a good chance of getting him. I'd, I'd have thought. Um, the Jed Spence one just seems a bit strange, really. I mean, obviously it's Marcus uh, Tavernier that that plays in a sim, like plays kind of that right wing back role at, at Borough, um, or a little bit more forward. So I could see, yeah, maybe he might be a bit surplus, but they're struggling for a, to put a team together. So it, it makes it even more of a strange decision by Borough to to let him go. All right. Well, my final question. Score prediction. Uh, I think 3-2 Forest. <laughs> okay. Um, that was what I went for. As in, consistently across videos, I've been saying 3-2. What, for every match now under Steve Cooper? No, every video I've said for this match, 3-2. <laughs> if yeah, they... I think they're they're gonna they'll have a go and we'll have a go. And I think it hopefully it'll be quite refreshing. If you, um, but we'll if see. You want, if you want three two under Steve Cooper for the rest of the season, if it's a Forest win, I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, wouldn't, wouldn't it be nice to see <clears throat> having a go, having a go? <clears throat> All right. Well, thank you, Scott, for coming on. I appreciate it. No worries. Thank you. And until next time on Talk Forest TV, goodbye.